what we're going to start working on is learning how to prepare a window. Learning how to scrape, sand, caulk, and spot prime a window is pretty much the bread and butter of this industry. We're going to be doing scraping, sanding, caulking, spot priming on a lot of other substrates as well. But for now, why don't we start with one of the most common substrates we'll see in our industry, a window pane. So, first thing you're going to want to do is take your scraper and scrape away all of the loose and failing paint. Following this, we're going to sand the edges smooth using our electric sanding equipment. We're then going to use a caulking gun and some caulking to seal all the cracks and loose joints. Any uh, loose joints or cracking putty which takes place in between the window and the window pane, we're going to fill with what's called window putty. It's what holds the glass pane to the actual frame. Caulking is what we use to seal any cracks that connect two different substrates, like two different pieces of wood, such as wood to wood here, or wood to brick, so that other dirt, moisture, and loose debris don't get into those substrates over time. So why don't we take a look at what sanding looks like, or sorry, what scraping looks like. You notice I'm not pushing too hard, I'm not gouging into the wood. These scraper blades are very sharp, and they can actually be sharpened using uh, a file uh, as they dull down. You can also flip the blade right here by undoing this screw and flipping it as they dull down over time. Now this paint is already pretty well peeling, so I'm just going to give it a light scraping. If I needed to use more muscle, I could push down on this and give it a real strong scrape down if there were a lot heavier peeling chips. So after we make sure that we scrape all the different areas, this window has now been pretty well scraped down. I've made sure to touch the surface once everywhere at least and get some of these cracks. Great, now it's re relatively clean. I think it's time that we do some sanding. So I'm going to put my tools down, make sure we have a ni nice and tidy crew kit area so when the client comes out they see our tools, it looks very presentable, very professional. And now we're going to move on to sanding. So first we scrape, then we sand, then we caulk, and then we spot prime. Now, there's many different types of sandpaper that you can use. It's all goes by, or it's all measured based on the grit of the sandpaper. So on the back, you see here it says 50 garnet paper. The 50 refers to, uh, well, it's 50 grit. And that means that for every square inch, there's 50 pieces of sand. We can then go to 80 grit, which is a bit of a finer paper, because the more pieces of sand per square inch there are, the uh, finer the sandpaper is. So we're going to use that for sanding lighter edges. 50 grit and 80 grit are typically your exterior grade sandpapers. Interior sandpapers are going to be 80, 100, 120, 150. For sanding things like drywall plaster uh, on walls, it has to be very smooth, very fine. Obviously not as coarse and rough as ragged old paint chips like this, right? So I'm going to use, uh, there, there's two different techniques I'll use for sanding. The first one I'm going to do is make sure I have this right. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, so you can sand by hand or you can sand with a hand sander. So when you're sanding by hand, it's very important to learn how to do that so you can get into all the nooks and crannies that a, sand ha that a hand sander can't quite get into. So you're going to fold your piece of paper. This one's a little bit wet, but that's okay. And we're going to rip it. Okay. And then I'm going to fold that once like that and once like this so that I have a nice piece of sandpaper that once I run out of this face, I can refold it to that face. I can mix it all around and get versatile with it. This is going to help me get into some of these nooks and crannies like this. And the goal is you want to be able to sand it down uh, smooth enough that a client couldn't come by with a fingernail and remove any chips, okay? Sometimes you're going to have a lot older, a lot thicker oil chips. These, uh, these chips aren't that, that thick, so it's very easy to get it very, very smooth. But sometimes after years and years and coats and coats of paint, after 40 years, for example, you're going to have old, thick oil chips that you're not going to be able to get it fully smooth. Uh, so it's important to set the right expectation with the customer that at the end of this, you know, we're going to get all the edges as smooth as possible. If they're super old, thick oil chips, we're not going to be able to completely sand those away. That would be a refinishing job. But we will be able to sand them well enough so that whenever you stick your fingernail behind it, you're not going to be able to lift up any paint and it's going to last for at least three to four years. But on a smoother window like this, we should be able to sand all this stuff down pretty perfectly. Only a couple of layers of paint over time. So I'm going to do my best to sand it as well as I can for the client here. 50 grit's definitely a good grit to be using here. Making sure I'm getting into all the cracks. Okay. 
Okay. So I'm gonna make sure to sand these areas here too. It's tough to get into some of them, but if painting was easy, everyone would do it. So you gotta have some muscle, you gotta be able to have some, some grit and determination. Oh, always have all your prep tools with you as well, because as you see here, there's some loose and failing putty that I failed to remove on my first scraping round. So when I go up on a ladder with me, which we'll do in a little bit, I'm gonna have all my tools with me on either my tool belt or in a little pocket so that I can remove all the putty and loose and failing stuff as I keep going. So for example, if I, if I were to keep going and sanding and then realize that, oh, I forgot to do some caulking, I gotta make sure to have my caulking gun with me so that I can do all these tools at once. I'm not just gonna put it back on the ground and forget about it and never use it again. It's a, it's a versatile prep process. Okay, we have a wire brush. You can brush away some of this stuff. Actually, I should be using a sweet brush for that, not a wire brush, so I'll use my hands for the moment. Remove some of these chips here. Should find a dust brush in your crew kit to be able to fan off these window sills. Give them a quick rag down before you're getting ready to prime it and paint it. Okay, good. All right, now this window sill's getting good. Of course, I'll get my vacuum shortly and vacuum up all these chips so that the client is uh, satisfied with the cleanliness on the job site. Now, the second way to do sanding, and what I really recommend, because we guarantee this on all sites, it's gonna save your painters a lot of time. It's gonna save you a lot of time. Um, well, if you are a painter, it's gonna save you a lot of time. Uh, is to use our electric sanding equipment. And this is also gonna leave a finer finish. It's gonna be, allow you to sand down some of those edges that we talked about, not being able to get as well with uh, hand sanding a lot smoother. Now normally this stuff will just tear away, this piece of sandpaper is a little bit wet. This would be one of your best friends all summer, the electric sander. Okay, so you undo the clip like this, it's on right there, you undo it and push that open. You take your sandpaper, you slide it in, close the first clip, fold it around to the other side, of course fold it under, and close the second clip. Now, I happen to be uh, painting window right near an uh, electrical outlet, so I'm just gonna plug in here. But often you'll have extension cords uh, on site that'll allow you to uh, plug into an extension cord to keep going. So, beautiful, we got power. Okay, you also have a button here that if you hold it, it's gonna, for sanding a deck, for example, it's gonna keep it going. To release it, just click there. So, I'm gonna hold this, I'm gonna do a bit of sanding on my window now. <laughs> see how quickly that sands away the surface and gets all those chips and all that fine uh, edges really taken away of a lot, taken care of a lot faster. One more thing I'll warn you about, be very careful throughout the summer because almost once every summer, every second summer, we have a big uh, accident with this, is that someone will take an electric sander and sand it right next to the window glass and it's going to cause scratches all the way around the glass. Even if you're using a piece of sandpaper like this and you're scratching it right there, Sandpaper will scrape glass if you're not careful. And if you, if you do this a couple times, a couple windows throughout the job, you might find yourself uh, or your manager replacing five, 10 window panes on a client's home due to sanding marks all over the window. So be very careful when you sand edges that touch the glass. You gotta, you gotta be very careful of that. So when I do it, I'm gonna almost keep my finger there as a buffer so that my finger sort of touches the glass and not the sandpaper. Be very careful of that. So, you know, I'm never, I'm never gonna bring my electric sander on an edge like that, right, connecting to the glass, because it's too, too powerful for me to control uh, with the right amount of level that I want to ensure the glass isn't getting damaged. Okay, quick, quick go over. I think we're ready to move on to caulking. Excellent. Keep my tools nice and tidy. Always very important to have a clean job site. Okay. You know, that's a good example. So this chip was connected to a piece of caulking and as I started peeling it away, I saw this giant, really old seal 
almost peeling all the way in. It was very tough to pull out, and I pulled out and it came out a bit, and I almost saw me taking out this entire seal, even though the rest of it's pretty well fastened. It's a lesson about over prepping. You don't want to over prep the window. You know, if I peel that out, I'm creating a whole lot more prep work for myself because it's really well fastened. So instead, I'm just going to cut it at the point that is loose, not peel everything out, not remove all the old caulking, not remove all the old putty, only the stuff that's loose and failing already. So be careful not to over prep windows. Careful not to, uh, you know, make gouges in the wood or things like that from scraping and always keep your wits about you. So next, caulking. This is a caulking gun. Um, I guess I'll show you how it works. There's a couple different uh, colors of caulking that you can use. You have uh, brown, gray, beige. You can use white caulking here. To open the caulking gun, there's a little razor right there that you're gonna squeeze after putting that in and open it. Uh, you always wanna make sure to cut it on an angle. If you cut it flat, it's uh, gonna be difficult to maneuver around the cracks uh, of the different areas. So we're gonna cut it on an angle. Okay, great, good. Now I'm gonna pull this lever back here. Insert the caulking tube and I'm ready to do some caulking. You always want to make sure to have a rag with you on site when doing caulking. Because if you're going to you know, paint, dust, whatever, you wipe it on your shirt, you wipe it on, the, on your pants or the drop sheet, it's going to wash away. But caulking will stay over time and it's never going to wash away. So you're going to ruin your shirt, you're going to get it all over, it's not going to be comfortable. You're painting in the hot sun over the over a couple of days. So you know what, the one thing I forgot here is a rag, so I'm going to make sure to go get that and come right back. Now I'm going to be using the gray caulking. Often we'll use gray caulking on a black substrate the same way that you would use a gray uh, primer to do spa priming. Over time, if I use a white caulking and it peels away, you're gonna see the white caulking coming through even if it's painted black. So I'm gonna try to use gray. So we're gonna open it again like this. Okay, put it in my caulking gun and I'm ready to go. You see here I'm caulking just the area where I see a noticeable crack. Other areas over here where the paint is well sealed, no need to caulk that. So I'm gonna take my thumb, or sorry, not my thumb, my middle finger here, go ahead and gently over that area. Make sure to clean up all the excess caulking. Nothing nastier than when you have caulking dry all like that on a surface, it's gonna dry, we're gonna to have to paint it and the client's gonna see it. So always make sure any excess caulking is well wiped off before we're gonna start painting. A good technique for that is I'll guide it with my middle finger and then keep my other two fingers there to catch the excess. So if I'm doing like that, sort of catching all that excess caulking that's, you know, go over it with my thumb after a little bit, smooth it out. Okay, good. And I think we're looking good. This window wasn't in too bad shape. But caulking is honestly one of those big things that'll make the difference between a really professional job and an averagely professional job. I mean, this is a black frame here. I see one more spot, I'm gonna hit that. But uh, any areas that are white, any windows that are white or a very light color, you look back at the end of the day, and what you'll see is just these black lines appearing from the ground, and it'll look like, well, was that painted, wasn't it? And in reality, it's just because there's some gaps in between the frames that weren't caulked properly. So the best scraping and sanding job can really be ruined by an improper use of caulking, to, of caulking equipment. The other thing I'll point out is that you, do, you, always want to, you don't want to leave this hanging on a windowsill like that. You always want it resting over a drop sheet because this will drip. These yellow guns are called dripless caulking guns, but even after I put a lot of pressure on it, I'm going to give it a quick release just to make sure that there's not more pressure that's going to cause it to drip on carpet or drip on cement or something, dry up in the sun and have clients coming at you uh, asking you for cleaning up and complaining. So always make sure you keep that over the drop sheet. Very good. So what's next? We're going to dust away this window with a rag or with uh, a, a brush from the crew kit. And I believe we're ready for, we're going to do some puttying, and then we're also going to do uh, spot priming, and then we're ready to paint. But for the moment, let's take a look at what grinding would look like uh, on some wrought iron railings while we wait for the putty to arrive on site. Mm -hmm.